Greetings everyone at Selbu and on our Selbu Facebook page, Pastor John Cross here. And last Sunday I had a little trouble. Eric and I are on this bicycle trip, as many of you know. And uh, my dropped my phone, I was in an urban area, went back to get it, and there were a lot of people around, the phone was gone. <laughs> so I had to order it and then caught up to us at a KOA campground in Mims. And by the way, because we were in Mims, Eric and I got to see the SpaceX launch last night from what, a, but a mile away maybe. It was pretty spectacular. So bike trip's going well. We've got a little over 300 miles in, almost halfway. Um, Eric's stronger rider than I, but we're both hanging in there and we've had favorable wins, so we're grateful. Sharing my faith, what I'm going to do is kind of what I was going to do Sunday because you got a backup sermon, and this was Belief Chapter 20, so sharing my faith. And for 1 Peter 3, 13, we read, But if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled in your hearts. Honor Christ as holy, always being prepared to make a defense for anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. But do it, but do it with gentleness and respect. Now, Eric and I are on this trip, and Honestly, we don't have like a lot of opportunity to share our faith, but I would say Eric and I do it organically as we meet people. Last night, uh, Eric got talking to a, a lady about Eric's age, camping by herself, and and uh, just talked about her trip, and she ended up taking us so we could see a good view of the launch, and you know, found out we were pastors, and I think through our stories and empathy, we were able to share some things with her naturally, and she did with us. My experience is from being <coughs> in mud flat, you know, a lot of times for other people other than the preacher, the thing to do is just in the course of things along the way, a lot of the ministry of Jesus was, you know, he came across the Samaritan or he came across this situation or that one, and then he, he dealt with it. And as he did, he shared God's word. So most of us do not have people come up from out in the field and say, well, Farmer John, what is the reason for the hope that you have within you? <laughs> you know, people don't talk that way. But they might say, you know, I hear your your uncle's been sick or you, you, lost, you lost your mom, you had this problem. And at that point, we have a chance to say something, but don't say too much. You've heard me use this illustration before. It's like a, a little bit of cologne or a little bit of perfume. Like if somebody just gets the right amount of, of uh, perfume and you kind of go by and it's like, oh, this, this is just kind of nice. But if you've ever been by somebody that like dumped it on a little too much and you go by, especially if you're inside the in elevator, it's just too much. And when we share our faith, it's a little bit that way. So somebody says, you know, how do you deal with this? You could say, well, because Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and you too could have this faith and make it through these times. If you would only follow him right now, well, that might be just a little much, but you might say, it's been hard and it's shaken me to the foundation, but um, God's really been there. And stop a little bit. And maybe this is a stranger, they might say, well, what do you mean about that? And so there's a follow-up. So I think maybe that's what Paul's getting at. They kind of see there's a difference in our life and we have a chance to say, well, part of the story, so to speak, kind of like my friend Eric says, point to Jesus and then stop and, and see what happens. So as you're going through that chapter 20 of Believe, I hope and pray that you'll be able to think, now how could I share my faith in my everyday life? At home, at the care center, I'm retired now out on the farm, I meet people in town, I'm at the bar, I'm at the restaurant. How could I share my faith in a beautiful and organic and honest way? Now I'm going to ask uh, my buddy Pastor Eric kind of help me out here, so we're going to have him come in. Hi, welcome. My name is Pastor Eric Walbolt. I'm retired now. I live in Champlin, Minnesota. I've been a friend of Pastor John since 1978. That's a long time. And so we're on this bike trip, and I wanted to share with you a few words from John chapter 4, verses 39 through 42. It says this, Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. 
They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we've heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. I grew up in a house, a pretty stoic house. I come from a German background, and we weren't very emotional people. We didn't share a lot of feelings. And particularly when it came to the faith, it was always, well, I'll share by my faith, and people will know I'm a Christian by the way I live. And that is absolutely true. We're called to love God. We're called to love our neighbor as ourself. But a lot of times, people who aren't even Christian live lives just as good as us. And so sometimes the words are important to let people know about the hope that we have. In the scripture reading, people believe because of the women's testimony. So to get more personal with you, in about four and a half years ago, I had a back surgery, a laminectomy. It's where they clean out a disc. About three and a half years ago, I had open heart surgery for a valve problem. About two and a half years ago, I got a new left hip, which thankfully is working great. And just over a year ago, I had a fusion in my back, the L4, L5. And I've got to tell you, there were some times when I needed words from people. Not just people saying, hey, how's it going? Or how are you feeling? I got a lot of that. But I needed some people to use words of encouragement to remind me to trust God as I was going through the pain and the healing of all these different surgeries. And I needed people to tell me and have empathy and share with me how God has gotten them through times. I don't need people preaching at me, right, or yelling at me or beating me over the head with the Bible, but I just need some people sharing with me some good godly compassion and encouraging me with words, not just by the way they live, but with words, how to confidently and uh, persistently run the race that God has put before me. And the last four and a half years, I got to tell you, have been tough. But the words of friends like your pastor John here, who's behind the camera, People at the church that I serve, my own family, reminding me about Christ's love for me, even in the midst of the valley, um, were very, very important. So I want to encourage you, think of a word or two that you can share with somebody, a word of encouragement, helping them persist in the race that God has given them. God bless you, and thanks for taking time to be with us today. Thanks, Eric. Eric's a lot of fun. I, I don't really use my Facebook much, but I think now that I got my phone back, I'm going to post some of the nonsense. Um, so you might check, check some of that out later on. But we are at St. Timothy's Lutheran Church in Melbourne, Florida, where we've been invited to go to have uh, lunch. We're going to have like their soup, kitsch, soup supper, and then we're going to go to worship here today. Uh, then we've each chosen a room. I think Eric's going to be in the confirmation room. I'm in the storage room in the back where we're going to sleep and then get out of here. We got 60 miles to go tomorrow, 60 miles to go the next day. Today was easy. We had 42. The day before, we went 67. And for a couple old guys, we've done pretty well. But it's been a lot of fun. And I want you to know, as your pastor, that it's refreshing for me. I miss all of you, and I look forward to getting back there. I'll be back for church on the 26th. But remember, we can share our faith wherever we are. We'll try to do the best we can tonight. And God bless you, and thanks for checking in. Bye-bye.